Hey guys, welcome back to Dragon Exotics, and today we will be also continuing our Audible series of Legends Turn to Ash, and we will be starting with Chapter 4. So, let's get started. Legends Turn to Ash, Chapter 4, A New Friend My body felt heavy. I was standing, gazing off into the distance. Ahead of me I could see a dark-colored dragon soaring through the sky, panicked. He turned around several times as if something was on his tail, but each time he saw nothing. He was heading for the island directly ahead, an island with a leaking volcano. My vision blurred for a minute, but when it refocused, I immediately noticed these oddly shaped spears launched from the base of the island. The dragon elegantly dodged the orbs, but to both his and my surprise, an arrow surrounded by black mist sprung from the earth and pierced his underside. Distracted by the arrow, the dragon yelled in pain. For that one second, he had forgotten about the spears, and before he knew it, a spear was right in front of him. It opened and shot out a net that dragged the exhausted dragon back down to the earth. My vision blurred once more as I opened my eyes to the early morning sun. What was that? A dream? It felt so real. Did I witness a dragon kidnapping or a murder? What in the world? Why did I feel so familiar? I know I felt something like that before, but where? Attempting to ignore my dream, I put my arms behind my head and stared at the sky. The sun was starting to poke out of the tiny forest clearing. Reflecting on last night, I realized that Alzora had not once tried to put me down on purpose. It was just her way of making jokes, and I had a newfound respect for her. Nobody's perfect, not even dragons. So I tried to avoid her grumpy mood that morning. Good morning, Elzora. I stretched as much as I could and yawned softly. Eh, morning. Why are you in such a good mood? Elzora demanded grumpily. She was still trying to make her way out of bed. I didn't think she'd gotten enough sleep. Within an hour of waking up, I was already on Elzora's back and ready to head out. I had no choice but to force a smile and act happy and normal. The only problem was that I ended up seeming weirder than usual. It was lucky that Elzora hadn't caught on. It was frustrating not being able to pinpoint why that dream felt so familiar. I glanced at her from atop her back. How much longer do you think it'll be? I needed to focus. I didn't have time to figure out my dream problems. Elzora unfolded her wings and sprung into the sky, eventually straightening herself out. I flew a lot longer than expected yesterday, so I think we can be there a little after midday. Great! I can't wait to eat at one of those restaurants there. I wonder if they have good food. Oh man, I'm getting so hyped. I threw my hands into the air and laughed with glee. She rolled her eyes and stared forward, focused on our flight. Well, that's great and all, but what am I supposed to do? I can't set foot anywhere close to a human. Well, maybe you could... No, that won't work. Wait, I think I have extra cash in my wallet. I could probably order you something. Have you ever had human food before? Shocked by the question, Alzora smirked. I don't get how that is even a question. I'm a dragon. There's no way I could ever eat human food. I smiled at her. Well, I don't know. I thought maybe Beckett could have brought you human food. We both laughed as Alzora ascended higher into the clear blue sky. This moment was so lighthearted. I couldn't help but grin. Everything seemed perfect. It was a moment that allowed me to forget this whole mission and focus on having a good time. It was the best situation for both of us. I knew that Elzora and I needed to relax and have fun, but it seemed to be an unrealistic idea at the time. I didn't think that we would be able to get to a relaxed point so quickly. It gave me a chance to set this whole dream thing aside for now. I wish the feeling of relief would have lasted longer, because out of nowhere I recalled why my dream was so familiar. That's it. The dream is just like when Paul retouched me with his talon, and I had that weird vision. Though this dragon wasn't one of the dragons in the first vision. I don't get it. The visions seem like they're supposed to add up, but I don't think they're having anything in common. I guess they both had that black mist, but that brings up a whole other crisis. The black mist resembled the essence that spoke to me that one night when I was walking home. Should I tell Elzora? If I do, what would I even say? 
Oh, hey, I keep getting visions of death, destruction, and kidnappings. You know, the usual. No, I think I'll wait a bit. Maybe if I get another vision, I can tell her. I don't have enough information to go off of. Plus, it's not like my visions are going to help me right now anyway. Hours passed by, clouds said their hellos and goodbyes, and the wind whistled its tune. It was a little after midday when Alzora shook me from my daydreams and deep thoughts. The flight had consisted of a few dives and spins, but other than that, nothing stood out. It seemed to take forever, but we arrived at last. New Zealand. I remembered that back in sixth grade, I wrote a report on the country, but I never imagined that I would get to visit. Alzora slowly guided over a small town, taking care not to be seen by the villagers. A long river snaked from the ocean into the village. It seemed to cut the area in two. Trees sat between each house, and it was an overall green place. In the distance, beautiful, lively mountains sprung from the ground. It was extremely charming. Azora spotted a hill a decent distance from the village and decided to land. As always, she reeled in her wings, dived, and gripped the ground with her talons. Luscious green grass stretched across the hill, and a small log cabin was at the edge of it. The breeze brushed my face as I took in the, v the view. A faint sound of laughter had broken my train of thought. I glanced at Alzora, whose ears were now twitching. Is someone laughing? I asked. She tilted her head and pointed north. Yeah, over there. Go check it out. Hey, why me? I instinctively replied. Azora rolled her eyes. Do I really need to explain this to you? I'm a dragon, so if that's a human... Oh yeah, forgot about that. Sorry, I said with a smile. Attempting to be as stealthy as possible, I tiptoed closer to the laughter. One by one, I saw these brown furry balls of fluff pop up from the grass. They were surrounding and jumping on a boy. He seemed to be 15 or so. The creatures surrounding him were completely unknown to me. They had long beaks and long legs. Apparently, they were the cause of the boy's laughter. What do I do in this kind of situation? I said out loud. I took a deep breath and slowly stepped forward, waving my hand. Hi! Startled, the young boy shooed the creatures off his belly and nervously stood up. He had a ginormous grin on his face as he took a step forward. Hi, my name's Asher. What's yours? He asked kindly, tilting his head. I smiled back. His innocence and positive attitude were adorable. I wasn't sure why, but he reminded me of a little kid. My name's Whisper. What are these things by you? Asher glanced down at one of the weird-looking creatures. They are called kiwis, flightless kiwis to be exact. They're a type of bird. They're so cute, aren't they? I nodded. Yes, I'll have to admit they are quite cute. At that moment, I noticed an abnormal red mark on the side of Asher's neck. What's that? I wonder, could he be... No, that's too much of a coincidence. But it would make sense since he already lives this far from civilization. My expression became serious. What's that on your neck? Shocked, Asher quickly covered the spot with his hand. Oh, it's nothing. Never mind that. Do you want anything to drink? I can get you something from my house over there. I never get any visitors. I lightened my tone to ease the atmosphere and make him feel more relaxed. Yes, please, could I get some water? You're a very kind young man. Asher went back to his happy expression. Thanks. Yep, I'll get you some water. Be right back. With that, Asher sprinted over to the log cabin. Once he entered the house and the door shut behind him, I called for Alzora. Hey, weird question, but do you think this kid could be the fire destined? doubt it. He should have met his partner already, and he should have a mark somewhere on his body, and I didn't see either of those. As her tail whipped from side to side, she let out a low growl. Well, this is stupid. What are we going to do now? I stared at the clear sky above. Actually, I did see something on his neck. He didn't want me to see it, though. It's possible that he does have the mark. Alzora's dark, narrow pupils gazed into my soul. Okay, how are you going to check for sure? You know, I could always scare him into telling us. Her face shifted into a malicious smile. A slight snicker sneaked from my mouth. Oh, quit it. We aren't going to scare him. I'll ask him straightforward. He seems like a nice boy. What could go wrong? 
Azora rolled her eyes, smiling. Hmm, well, this will be entertaining. Well, come on, it won't be that bad, I whispered as she launched into the air and flew away. The next couple of minutes were filled with me twiddling my thumbs and petting the flightless kiwis. They really were adorable creatures. After a while, Asher came from the house holding a bottle of water. He had the same ginormous grin on his face as he did before. It took him a while to walk over to me, but when he did, he offered the bottle of water. I gladly accepted it. Here, he said joyfully. Thank you, I replied, smiling. Okay, so this is going to sound kind of weird, and you probably won't want to answer me, but it's important that I know the truth. That red mark on your neck, what is it, and where did it come from? Asher was a little more than shocked by the question, but continued to put on a smile. Um, nothing. Sorry. Why do you want to know? Why is it important? I tried to continue smiling as much as he was, but it was difficult when we were talking about a serious topic. Please, Asher, I know that you don't know me, but it's vital. Please? He took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and exhaled. To be honest, I have no clue what it is or how I got it. It just kind of appeared on my neck a few days ago. Also, I, also, I remember having this weird dream. It was a fun dream, but also scary. There were dragons and stuff, too. I didn't understand the whole dream thing he was talking about, but his memory of the mark seemed to match how I got it. Well, except for the fact that I watched it appear on my hand. Thanks a bunch. Can I get a closer look at, look at it? Asher hesitated, but soon nodded and tilted his head to the side so I could see his neck. The mark was a fire symbol made of reds and oranges and yellows. Smaller teardrop-shaped ovals surrounded the symbol. These ovals looked like they were meant to circle the flame in the center. It all made sense. Everything. His symbol that appeared undoubtedly represented fire, just as mine re represented ice. It's amazing, I whispered with a forced smile, pretending not to know anything about it. Do you by chance know anything about dragons? His eyes lit up at the word, dragons? I think they're awesome. I play some video games with them in it. I put my smile back and attempted to laugh, but both came out forced. What the heck is going on? He is one of the Destins, I'm sure of it. Why doesn't he know anything? Is he trying to hide it from me? No, he looks too innocent to do that. He isn't the lying type. What then? A familiar sound that I knew all too well captured my attention. Wing beats. What I heard were wing beats. I peered above, expecting to see Elzora. She's always improvising. Why can't she just let me handle this? Wait, that's not... The innocent boy, who was once standing in front of me, grinning, was now screaming and running in circles with his arms waving in the air. I had to admit, Alzora was right. This was going to be amusing. Putting the boy's actions aside, I focused on the more serious matter. Something was flying toward us, not Alzora and definitely not Polri. Asher continued to scream. It was a girlish scream. Eventually, he fainted and fell to the ground with a thump. This unknown dragon flying toward me sent chills up my spine. My legs wouldn't move. It was as if a thousand needles were piercing them all at once. An unbearable pain. Humid, scorching heat filled the air around me, and my head began to sweat. I could see the blur of Alzora rushing toward me in a full defense mode. The dragon was right above me now. Its chest plates looked as if they were leaking flames. At the last second, I felt something collide with my body and fling me to the hard dirt floor. Well, that's it everyone for chapter four. And I hope you guys will join me for our next chapter once it's released. And I hope you're enjoying the series so far. So keep me updated on your thoughts and I'll see you next time. Bye.